Hey, how's it going? Coach D here from All Out Athletes. And once again, we have another coach with, with us for the Last Dance Baseball Tournament podcast. And as we know by now, the seniors are actually getting a high school baseball tournament, an actual tournament where everybody's guaranteed three games. Now, we know it's not just for the seniors, it's for the juniors, the freshmen, the sophomore, who's ever on the team, whatever players they can get together, because some players couldn't make it. Some players were, they had other things happening with, with colleges or maybe on vacation, but some schools are actually trying to get together with other schools just to get a team. This is like a Sandlot baseball tournament, right? You Coach, you can't even use uniforms. You got to get your own uniforms. And then now instead of the athletes worried about what spikes am I wearing, what who has the most expensive bat or their glove or the, the glamour of it, they just care about playing. And that's all the coaches ever wanted was for the players to be so excited for their training right now because they get, it's become a get to now. They feel like, wow, we get to do this. And that's the excitement players always wanted. And with me today on our baseball podcast, yes, he's a lot younger than the other coaches I've had. He's, He's almost fresh out of college, almost. He, um, he was in the College World Series over at Kane University, and he was a two-time All-American. And those years, and one of those years, he still leads Kane University as the hit champion in a single season. He also has the same record for Steinert High School. And so he has the hitting record for college, and for high school. And he's with us here today, Coach Mike Masseri. Mike, how's it going? Great. How you doing, Coach D? Thank you for having me. Great. Well, let's jump right into it. You know, we talk about being an all-out athlete, and it sounds like you've gone all out in certain areas of your game. So how did you go – how do you feel – because – we have athletes who don't go all out, but then you have athletes on the team who do go all out. So how do you ignite those athletes? How do you get them to go all out when you see them holding back? Um, I mean, you just gotta, you got to – we always try to strive for perfection. Um, I mean, I tell our guys every day in practice, just go out there and try to be perfect. If you try to be – you're not going to you're not gonna be perfect, but if you strive for perfection, I feel like a lot of our guys buy into that. And it helps them out. It seems to help them out. You know, a lot of coaches, we talk about, oh, you can't be perfect, right? Nothing's perfect. But as you're saying, strive for it. But understand that when you strive for it, you're never going to get there, right? There's no, a, absolutely. There's a great um, documentary on, on Netflix. I mentioned on the last podcast, uh, it's called Cheer. And the coach won 14 national championships. And one of the things she said was, train until you get it right, and then train until you don't get it wrong. That's just about perfection. So when you take a ground ball and you get three out of five, is that good enough for you? Or are you going to keep going and get 10 out of 10? Are you going to get eight out of eight? Like, what is, what is it as you're talking about? You're striving for perfection. And it's funny. I always tell my guys, like, no matter what I'm doing, I want to win. Whether, whether I'm playing quakes in the backyard against my little brother, like, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I want to win. And I just try to instill that in my guys because sometimes they don't have it. And sometimes they're just like, ah, well, we lost today. And it hurts me more than it hurts them. And I felt, I feel that, again, my guys, since I've taken over the program, have really bought into that. Um, and we've been pretty success successful the past couple of years. So you've taken over the program over at Hamilton West. Correct. Right, in, in New Jersey. And you've had other, you've coached for other organizations, right? You coached for Babe Ruth right, the Babe Ruth League, and you got the team to the World Series when they were 14. I think you were the assistant. I was. Um, and that's – it's funny because this – well, not funny. It's pretty upsetting, actually. Okay. Um, but this senior class was – the. Um, I've been coaching them since they were 11 years old um, as the assistant coach uh, in the summers. We went to the 12-year-old Cal Ripken Regional. Um, we went to the 14-year-old Babe Ruth World Series. Um, and this is, this is that group of seniors that I have now. And I was really, again, I kind of brought them in, and I was really looking forward to seeing them out. So this last dance is just a great opportunity, um, again, for me to see them out. Yeah, it's amazing that I'm not sure, um, well, I'm sure he understands, but Mike Murray, who's the athletic director over at St. Joe's, it was his idea to come up with this tournament. 
And then one of the, and then a major league scout talent, John Kroger, jumped in with him and Brian Chapman over at Milburn High School. And they backed him. And they're, and they're all working, you know, they're like ubiquitous. They're like everywhere. They're on the phone. And just so you and everyone else, you can finally finish what you started with these athletes, right? You, it, you felt as if it was stolen from you. And now you're getting it back. When, and you must be extremely excited because I'm sure you have that bond with these athletes. And now Mike's saying, here you go. Here it is. Make the best of it. Take it back. It's, you've now taken it back all because of Mike Kroger and Chapman. Yeah, as soon as I heard that um, Mike was putting this together, we were actually in contact uh, last year, at the end of last year, for setting up a scrimmage this year. Um, we, never, we couldn't find the mutual date. But as soon as I heard that he was doing something like this, I heard that I may be only the North. Um, and I texted him right away. I said, hey, listen, I, I would love to get in. Um, I would love to try to get uh, teams in Mercer County in. Whatever you, whatever you need, I'll help you out with. Um, I didn't know that he was already pretty far along, um, and he had a lot of those schools already. But as soon as I heard, I was so excited. I got his phone number. I texted him right away. Um, and as soon as my kids heard, I started getting – emails hey coach are we doing this are we doing this I said guys calm down I said we'll get we'll get there I said yes I want to do it just as much as you do you ever get uh Texas like that before practice no not <laughs> at all actually it was funny today um we were supposed to uh my dad right now is running practice um and a couple of the uh seniors who are home from college right now from sorry previous um players they're running some practices and today it was poor. And they text, Coach, we're not canceled practice today. We're not canceled today. I was like, guys, it's a monsoon outside. We can't practice. Like, they're just so excited to get out there. It's unbelievable. You know, and that's what being, you know, you can either be in a sport or you could be into it, right? You, you're either in a job or into a job. You're in a relationship or into it. And the ins in some of these teams have now become the intos. They're totally into it. They want to practice in a monsoon. And that's what we talk about. Can you get excited for your training? Are you excited for training? Because coaches, you know, how many players have come to you? Or you heard it. Uh, you know, I'm sure when you played over in college and over in high school, you've seen some players say, you know, they want to be the best. You know, they train at this level, but they want to be at this level, right? But no, no, one, right, no one cares what they say. You just watch what they do. Right? Coaches don't care what any – we just want to see what you do. And now they're due – what they're going to – the energy they're going to put into what they do is going to be unbelievable. And that's what coaches always wanted. You want them to strive for that perfection, that excitement they're going to bring. So I wish you could be out there with them to share with that. You will one day. You get one day. <laughs> you got oh, one yeah. day. Well, July 13th, right? Yep, you get that one day. So what inspired you? I know you're from a baseball family. So can you talk a little bit about how your father inspired you? To, uh, I'm sure uh, there was some inspiration along the way. He's a baseball guy and uh, how growing up with him was. Yeah. I mean, my dad was, my dad was tough on me for sure. Um, again, always pushing me to be perfect, taking me to hit ground balls, whether it be in a parking lot, wherever, wherever it may be. Um, but again, always just strive for me to be perfect. Um, we would play competitions against one another. I mean, just, just little things like that. Always, always a competition. Um, and then he's, he coached me throughout Little League, uh, throughout Bay Ruth. Um, and then once I got to high school, he, he let me go. Um, which, again, a lot of, I feel, parents these days sometimes don't do, um, which is hurting. Which, again, I feel hurts the kids sometimes. Just, just let them go. Let them be coached and see what he can do when he's on his own. That's, again, that's what my dad did. He, um, I went on to Steiner. I played for Brian Gialella, um, who we're actually going to play in the uh, first round, hopefully, if we win and they win. Um, and then uh, I played Legion for Rich Gialella, his father. Um, again, they, those were just, they were just great guys, great coaches, great people to be around. Um, I learned a lot from them. Um, it's kind of – I take – a lot of things from different coaches, whether it be my dad, whether it be Brian Giolella, um, whether it be Neil Ivero. Um, I worked for Dave Gallagher for a while, former major leaguer. Um, and 
again, it's just you take things from different coaches and you kind of make it yours. Um, all of those coaches were extremely success successful. Um, and that's kind of just how, it, how, how my whole coaching career started. You know, you mentioned something interesting about how you want, you want to keep the energy in baseball when you're training because we know there's a lot of downtime in baseball. And you mentioned something with your dad about you guys were always competing while you were training. Can you talk about um, how, how he created that environment for, like, what did you guys do? What do you mean by competing? Just be, just be like, hey, I'm going to try to hit ground balls by you, or I'm going to try to strike you out here in this live simulation that we're going to do, or, or just whatever it was. I mean, it's, it's, it was hard to explain. It's hard to remember. But it's just, again, even when I do anything against him, whether it was play cards in the, or whatever, like anything, five could be 500 rummy. It's just he never let me win. And I appreciate that. And I feel like that helped me in the long run. You know, that's a great point. I work with my little cousin. He's five years old. So what do we do? We do wiffle ball, right? We just try and get him to swing straight. If I stood there and encouraged him, come on, you could do it. Let's go for 10 minutes. He's good. The second I tell him, you're not hitting this ball coming through. Oh, once you challenge him, as you're talking about, your father challenged you. Once you challenge him, all of a sudden their energy ignites. Oh, I'll show you. And yeah. if you can get athletes to say, I'll show you, that's what we're looking for. That's the challenge every athlete needs. They already know you're a fan of them by taking them out in the yard and working with them. Yes, and they need that pat on the back. When they do hit the ball, you said they weren't going to hit. When oh, they absolutely. do those things, that's when you show them that you're, th you're their biggest fan. But show me, and I'll tell you. And, yeah, that's great. And that's another thing, too. And I like to sometimes, hey, jump in the cage for five swings or go out with my shortstop and field some ground balls. Just to, again, say, oh, you can't make this play, or I, I'll make this play look better than you, make, make it look, and whatnot. Just, just get, getting that competition with them and then seeing me being able to do that, I feel like that's a big part of being a coach too. Yeah, so here at All Out Athletes, we call that compete training. So once you do technique training, right, you hit them the ground balls, you show them how to, you show them how to hit, all those things that we do with, with little kids. And as they get older, hey, the technique of hitting a baseball, you could break it down so many different ways. But once you have the technique, coach, then it's, as you're saying, it's now compete training. They're doing the same thing but at a more intense level. Now you're hitting the ball a little harder. Now you're really, now you're making the ball really, after they got it, right? So once, once they have it, once the technique looks perfect, you say, all right, now let's really hit some ground ball. Now let's see if you can get these. And that's the intensity you bring when you start compete training. So you mentioned some other coaches. Uh, you mentioned a uh, major league coach, Dave, a uh, major league baseball player. Um, can you talk about some things you, um, you learned from him, like one thing you learned from him that maybe he did differently than other coaches or other athletes you ran into? Um, I really, I never really got the opportunity to play under him. He, he owned the, he owns Gallagher, Sportica Gallagher Baseball. Um, I don't know if you heard, I think they're out of Manalpin now. Okay. Um, and I just coached under him. So I've only heard him really speak um, to uh, teams and whatnot. And I just feel like when he speaks, everybody just, just locks in. <laughs> everybody just locks in and they they just love hearing him speak he's got that humor and that seriousness all in one and it's 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 really awesome to hear him speak you know great speakers have that energy they're able to and then they're able to laugh right and that's the way it is on the baseball field right because if you're all if you're all out every second of the you got to and then go right at it again, right? Because that's what baseball is. You hit a ground ball, you throw it back. Now you, you know, you rest for a second, and then, all right, it's coming again. Or, you, or, or you're up at bat. You can't be juiced up <laughs> the whole time too much. So you got to take it down. And that's what great speakers are. That's what sports is. And so can you talk a little bit about some of your philosophies about how do you get the players, uh, you know, if you have some players dragging through practice or, you know, you have those – I don't know if you experienced it yet, Coach. You're, you know, you're a young coach. Maybe you have. But, you know, one of the biggest nightmares for any coach is to have a great player and they don't buy into anything that's going on on the team. You know, you'd rather have them be an average player but totally energized and focused on what Coach is saying. 
Have you experienced yeah. that yet? I think, I think it really comes down to the leadership that you have on a team. Um, and I feel like hearing it from me, yeah, it's, it's good. But hearing it from one of your peers, I feel like it sinks in kind of like with, kind of like with your parents. Like I hear it from my dad, sometimes it goes in one ear and right out the other. But then I hear it from somebody else. I'm like, oh man, maybe my dad was right. Um, but I feel like lead, the leadership that which I have this year um, with my seniors, um, whether it be working out uh, in the off season, they took they ex- took all these younger guys under their wing um, and just kind of showed them the right way. But I feel that if you have that leadership, it really goes a long way. Yeah, we talked with um, Chris Banos, the varsity coach over at Somerville High School, and one of the things that we talked about on that podcast was exactly what you're saying. The exact same thing. The coaches all say they all say they they say the same thing in different ways, right? So what? So you're saying if the leader's working hard, everybody else is working hard, and, and, and that's it. Is that is that leadership? You're saying they're taking a leadership. So if you have a great leader on a team, what's a great leader? Somebody who's energized and focused, somebody who's all in, somebody who's all into it. Well, if the leader's all into it and they respect that leader, right, it's less work for the coach. Then the coach, instead of spending the whole time trying to motivate the players, the coach can actually just coach the game and coach yeah, the, and I just feel like, part of the game. I feel like I bring a lot. I bring a lot of energy every single day, and I feel like the guys feed off of that. Sometimes you see – Coaches that just kind of like, oh, well, here we go. And they're got that lackadaisical feel. And sometimes that's how the players react to those type of coaches. And I feel that I bring my energy every single day. And I feel like the kids feed off of that. Yeah, coaches have different ways of, you know, every coach doesn't have to be a rah-rah coach. Not that I'm saying you're a rah-rah, rah-rah, oh, no, rah-rah no. coach. I'm just saying that you don't always have to be, let's go. I mean, I'm that type of coach. But then sometimes it's just a whisper. Sometimes it's just hey, you going to let this guy strike you out this time? He struck you out last time. You know, just to get, say something that's going to challenge them. You know, he thinks he's got your number. You know, right? Remember last game? He's waiting for you. Anything that will ignite them. And, and if you say that to some players, some of those players might, oh, how could you say that? How can you bring up what he did to him last time? We gotta, you got to realize what player you're talking to. Because some of those players, they'll – They'll shrink. Some players like that, and they want to be reminded of what happened last time. So you have to understand what player, you know, you're talking to. So, Coach, over at um, Hamilton West, what are some of, what's some of the things that you guys do differently that, than you've done, uh, than that you've trained for in your high school on that team or on the, the uh, King University team? What are some of the things that you do at your – practices now that you didn't do when you were training um we really strive on being the best base running team in the state like that we want to be the best base running team in the state we want to steal the most bases we want to get the most dirt ball reads we want to take the most extra bases um and we work on that constantly it is actually the first thing that we do after we stretch run and throw is we base run um and again i make it i want to do it first because i want to let them know that i feel that is one of the most important parts of the game and again we're not going to hit five six seven home runs right? that's not the type of game that we play it's not the type of hitters we have do we have a couple guys yeah but i strive on taking the extra base getting the dirt ball read going first to third getting the third base with less than two outs because there's how many ways to score um, with less than two outs from third base. And that's just, that's what we strive on. That's what we do every single day. It's what we do right after we stretch, run, and throw. And that's what I feel that we do more of. I kind of feel like as I was being coached, we always did at the end of practice when everybody's tired, when everybody's drained, and when everybody's mind is kind of gone. Um, But I feel and if we do it right away, they'll lock in. Right. Uh, it's a technique. To, to me, everything's a technique, and that's what it sounds like you're showing the athletes, right? One, I mean, one half a second too late, one half a second too slow, you're out. <laughs> and, 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 and be able to read that, 
right? From going from base to base, being able to read the ball, being able to read the pitcher. And I think that you're the first coach to bring that up, um, to do that. Can you explain, can you go a little bit into more detail exactly how you do that? Um, well, we start off going home the first. Um, and again, we'll just go over the technique, getting out of the box, go through. Um, we'll get go through our turns, go through our turn with a ball on right, go through our ball with a turn with a ball on left. And every day I will go through a base. So home the first day one, um, first to second day two. Um, and then we just continue to rotate it through. Um, so for example, we try to make, we try to do it live too sometimes where I'll get one of my coaches on the mound and he'll throw dirt balls or he'll throw just a regular fastball. And they either got to get a secondary or read that dirt ball. So I try to do it live with three people up at a time. Um, same thing with like runner on second, reading that ground ball. A lot of coaches sometimes say, ah, ball on the left side of uh, second base, hold, don't go to third. But our, our philosophy is if you can beat the ball, then get the third. If you can get past the ball, then you can get the third base. So if it's a slow ball hit in front of you, you could probably beat it and get the third. So we'll hit live balls with three runners up at a time. Again, competing against one another. Who can get the best read? Who can get the best secondary? So on and so forth. And we'll do the same thing at third base, hitting live, whether we're doing um, contact plays at third or whatever we're doing. Um, we try to do it live as well as just go over it to give them more of a game-like feel. So you're teaching them the how. How do you get out of the box? How quickly can you get out of that box? And, right, that makes all the difference in the world. Last inning, double play ball, guys on third. They get the double play, game's over, guy gets the first. And it's all on the how you get out of the box. And then you're talking about when. When do you go home from third? And that's where you're breaking it down where the ball is, depending on how far the ball is out. And you're actually showing that and breaking that down. And I think that's extreme, that technique, that's all technique training. And that's extremely important in any sport is, is having a coach like that to break it down, especially as coaches, young as the one we have on here, the youngest coach we've had on so far. And he's a, this is, his, it's like a honeymoon period for you, but you don't sound like a newlywed. <laughs> you sound like you've been around the block a few times. No, I still, listen, I still live and learn every day. I mean, you learn from your mistakes. Um, and, I mean, that's, again, another way. Same thing when you're teaching in the classroom. You teach first period, man, that class was awful. You did such – I did an awful job. So I look at it, then third period, it's better just because, again, I've already done it. So and kind of how you coach. It's, it's how you do everything in life. I, I, I think what you said, you – I think what you said is important is that at first period, awful. Did awful. But it's not about it's not about the awful. It's about you want to know that so you can change it. And sometimes coaches may use words like that. And they're not meant to hurt you. They're meant to help you. They're meant to strengthen you. Okay, this is what happened. Now what's the action? What's our do? What are we going to do about it now? But this is where we are. That was it. okay. Now how can we get here? Right? And that's what you're talking about. There's no winning and losing, there's winning and learning. You have to lose, it has to hurt. It's got to hurt the loss. Did you? How many times has it hurt that made you a better player or is that's now making you a better coach if you keep that hurt with you? As you said, sometimes you take the losses worse than athletes because you're, I'm assuming you walk away and said, I could have did better, but it's strengthening you for the next time. Yeah, I mean, if you, let's say you get a guy thrown out or you put on a steal and, or you put on a hit and run and it was a bad pitch. I still feel that's my fault. And I'll tell my guys after the game, hey, this one's on me or whatever it is. But I, I try to, again, take the blame and just show them that it hurts. And, hey, we're going to get better next time. And hopefully we won't make that mistake again. So when we do these podcasts, we're about a week and a half. Uh, that We're, we're going to drop all the – you know, we're about a week or so behind. We're going to drop all the podcasts before the tournament actually starts. And then we'll have some coaches back on during the tournament or after the tournament and talk about how well the tournament's going and how well it went. So, so Coach, um, so you, you're going to you're gonna get together with your players on July 13th. And uh, would you like to come back on the podcast? We'd love to have you back on. Yeah, no, for sure. 
So you have any last words for your players or parents? Um, I spoke about the safety concerns with Coach uh, Mike Murray and Coach Kroger and Coach Brian Chapman. Um, you know, and I encourage everybody who's coming, bring your mask, bring your sanitizer. Uh, we know what's going on out there, you know, in, in parts of the country, in Texas, um, that football teams together, what happened? It spread the corona. So it's still live and it's, it's still spreading around the country, but we want to make this as safe as possible. We know they're going to be, you know, taking the temperature of all athletes with a gun. If their temperature is too high, they're going back home. So they're going to take every safety precaution they can to make sure the players are safe. And I encourage all the parents and all the fans to do the same, whether you're bringing gloves, you're wearing a mask, you're bringing sanitizer, and you're sharing it. Somebody don't have it, they're going to get something to eat. I mean, if we can make this as safe as possible for everyone, everyone, um, for the benefit of especially the players. So, Coach, you have any last words before we get to the last dance? No, I mean, just good luck to all the teams. I'm so glad that we are – we're getting this opportunity. Um, and again, it, like you said, it's important for the athletes, for the parents, for everybody to know that, again, you need to take these precautions because God forbid, maybe somebody, not all knock on wood, hopefully it doesn't happen. But let's say someone does get it on your team or whatnot, there's probably a good chance that you're going to be removed from the tournament. And again, you guys want to, you got, you're getting this opportunity to play. So be smart, not only here when we're at practice or whatever, just you got to be outside of practice as well when you're at home. Just be careful with, with what's going on. So, again, keep everybody around you healthy when you do come to practice. Yeah, it's, it's easier, especially if you keep in mind that if you go to one of these and you're going to be there, keep in mind somebody there has it. If you think of it that way, you'll take more of a precaution. That's not to drive yourself crazy. Who is it? <laughs> Who's got it? Who is it? That's just take more of a precaution that because everybody's so excited, right? And that's when we let our guard down is either when we get angry and we're not thinking or we get so excited we forget, right? I mean, that's what, you know, that's what happens in, in the sports game. Players get so excited they forget what they're supposed to do or they get so nervous they don't do anything. Right? And, you know, and, or they get so angry, they're not thinking. And that's basically when we're not thinking straight is when we're too nervous, angry, or excited. So we don't want people to let their guard down too much. You know, we want to still keep our guard up and still make it safe and still enjoy. I'm excited. My, my friends who don't watch high school baseball, they're going. <laughs> they're going to watch it. Um, it's just, it's, it's just a, especially this basically a Sandlot tournament that was just put together a couple months ago. Did you get the schedule out? Do you know um, who you're playing? Yeah, we do, we do have our uh, – I think he sent out an email today. Um, but we do have – our schedule for our um, pod is out. Um, we play at 5 o'clock at Gilder Field in Bordentown. Um, Steiner and Nottingham, two other township rivals, will play the winner of that game if we win. Um, those – the 1-0 and game and the 2-0 and game in our bracket will actually be at Arm and Hammer Field, um, Trenton Thunder Stadium. So we were lucky enough. Um, they were lucky. We were lucky enough for them to host that. Um, so we're hoping to at least get 1-0 and to get the opportunity to play there. And for me, again, the coach against my uh, former coach, who I have not got the coach against yet, so that would be, it would be pretty fun. I've been the assistant on the other side, but never the head versus the head. You know, it's so exciting to play against somebody, like right? It, you know, somebody you know. And um, we here uh, we talk sometimes about, you know, when the season first starts, everybody's excited. And then, you know, after a few weeks, they can't wait to play that first team. They're tired of playing against the same players over and over again. And then the first team finally shows up. And when they show up, you don't like them. <laughs> you hate them. <laughs> you know, not me. I, I've been bored. You show, I'm excited now that a team showed up. And now, and, and that's what we always talk about sports. It's, you know, they're like your, you know, without, the, without a better word, they're like your dance partner. Without them, there's no – without the other team, there's no game. Without the umpires, there's no game. Without referees, there's no game. And we tend to forget that. And I don't think – anybody's forgetting about that this time for this last dance baseball tournament. So coach, I want to thank you. Good luck to Hamilton West. Uh, good luck to you and your team. This is an exciting time for everybody. And like I said, we'd love to have you back on. 
Yeah, for sure. Reach out. Um, thank you again, Coach D, for having us. Good luck to all the teams. Um, and, again, hopefully uh, we can make a little run in this. And once again, this is a team. I know in baseball, a lot of times people talk about it's an individual sport. I hear people say that. Yeah, but they're all together. You could say that about you, – you're right. When they're up at bat, it's them. It's them versus the pitcher. But together, together, if everyone together can go all, can go all in on what Coach is saying, and they're all in the whole game, no matter who strikes out, no matter who makes an error, it doesn't matter. We're going to keep going. Our energy is going to ignite. If they're all in, no matter what happens, then and only then can the school can the school rely on the whole team to go all out. Thanks, Coach. We'll see everybody next time on the Last Dance Baseball Tournament podcast. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hey, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you got a lot out of what Mike Masseri shared with us and what all the coaches have shared their philosophies on how to get your athlete to get to the next level. And if you need a little bit more help to ignite that fire, to turn on your desire, join me every Monday morning at 8 a.m. I give a locker room speech to share with you the mental attitudes of champions so you can go out and train like a champion. And if you want to think like a champion, join us every Thursday night at 8 p.m. A professor in sports psychology comes on the podcast with us to share the mental skills of athletes and how they've gotten to the level they're at. So join us for that. And if you want us to come and ignite the fire within your organization, just email us, alloutathletes at gmail.com. Athletes, if you're serious of turning on and igniting that fire within you, just go to our YouTube channel, All Out Athletes, and you can find podcasts for mental skills, locker room speeches, and all our podcasts with the coaches to help you get anywhere you desire to be. See you next time.